Hi everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how can you tell the difference between true and false labor. This was a requested video, so thank you to the person who requested it. So let's get into it. So in true labor, let's start with contractions. So in true labor, your contractions are going to be a nice, regular pattern. In false labor, they're going to be irregular. So they're going to not be in a nice pattern. And the whole point of this is contractions cause cervical dilation and effacement. That's the whole point of contractions. So in order for that to happen, we want those contractions to be nice and regular. So when they're irregular, they're not doing that. Also the contractions, they will increase in frequency. So what does that mean? So maybe you're having contractions every 10 minutes. Then later on, you're having contractions every six minutes. Then every two minutes, that kind of thing, okay? So the time in between contractions will get shorter if you're in real labor. The duration, so how long each contraction lasts, will get longer. So maybe you're having them and they first start out and they're lasting, you know, 20 seconds each contraction and then they go away. As you get into true labor, they might last 60 seconds, 90 seconds, okay? So the duration will also increase. And the intensity will increase in your contractions. So they will feel stronger, they will feel more painful usually. In false labor, there are no changes in the contractions. So there is no increase in the frequency, increase in the duration, or increase in intensity. They're kind of all over the place. So that's how you know it's false. The pain. So usually in true labor, the pain will originate in the back and then kind of radiate to the abdomen, okay? And the woman in labor will feel that. She'll feel it in her back, she'll feel it in her stomach, she might even feel it in her bottom or her thighs. In false labor, it's pretty much all abdomen. So it starts in the abdomen, it stays in the abdomen. Dilation and effacement are progressive. So this is really the hallmark sign of real labor. Because you can have all the contractions you want, but if they're not doing anything, if they're not causing you to dilate or efface, which is the thinning of the cervix, if those things aren't happening, then you're not in real labor. So dilation and effacement are progressive. So dilation, we know that one, you know, zero centimeters to 10 centimeters. And effacement, the thinning, so you'll start off thick, then you'll be maybe 30% effaced, 50% effaced, and then 100% effaced when you're ready to deliver. So dilation and effacement must occur and they must be progressive in true labor. In false labor, that doesn't happen, right? Because that's the hallmark sign of true labor is that these cervical changes occur. So in false labor, no cervical changes are occurring. That's how you know. And then I wanted to point out these things because a lot of times if you're not sure, like if you're at home and you haven't been checked out yet, and you're not sure like, oh, should I go to the hospital or not, a couple of things you can try. So try walking, ambulating, walking around. If you're in true labor, this will make the contractions stronger. If you're not in true labor, if you're in false labor, this might actually make the contractions go away. Same thing with hydration. So a lot of times women who are dehydrated start having contractions and those may or may not put them into real labor. Like a lot of times in the summertime, uh, the labor and delivery units are really busy because a lot of women are dehydrated because it's super hot outside and they're throwing off all these contractions and then you check them and they're not really in labor. It's just they're dehydrated. So you give them fluids, you give you know a couple bags of LR or something like that and all of a sudden the contractions go away. That's not real labor. So hydrate, drink a lot of water, okay? If you're in real labor, nothing will happen, okay? You'll still be in labor. If you're in false labor, the contractions will lessen in intensity, lessen in frequency, and they might just go away altogether. And then rest, okay? So a lot of times, especially near the end of your pregnancy, when you're getting closer to your due date, doing lots of physical activity, you know, going to work, going for a jog or a walk, or just doing household chores, that kind of stuff, can put you into contractions and you're like, oh my God, am I in labor or not, right? So if that's the case, rest, put your feet up, relax for a while. 
if the contractions don't stop, if they become regular, they're more frequent, they're longer, they're stronger, you're probably in real labor. If they go away when you rest, that's false labor, that's not real labor. The last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about were a couple of myths regarding true and false labor. The last thing I wanted to do was kind of address a couple of myths or old wives tales that you might have heard about true versus false labor. So the first of which is, you're not really in labor until your water breaks. That's not true. You can be in full-blown labor with an intact bag of waters because what is true labor? Contractions that are regular. They're increasing in frequency, increasing in intensity, increasing in duration, and you have cervical change, so dilation and effacement. None of those things requires your water to be broken. Now, when your water breaks, it can help progress your labor, definitely, but it doesn't have to be broken for you to be into real labor. And actually, sometimes, very rarely, but it does happen, babies can be born still inside their intact amniotic sac. So that's pretty cool. So you don't have to have your water broken to be in real labor. The next thing is Braxton Hicks contractions are not painful. I've heard this one a bunch where people will say, oh, you can tell if they're real contractions because real contractions hurt and Braxton Hicks contractions don't hurt. That's not true because pain is subjective and everybody experiences it differently. So some women, if they have Braxton Hicks contractions, they don't even know they have them. They're not even feeling them. They just know that their stomach's getting tighter and it's not painful. For other people, they think they're in full-blown labor because they're in all this pain. They're saying, okay, it's 10 out of 10 pain. So it's a really individual thing. So it's not appropriate for you as the nurse to say, oh, those aren't real contractions because they don't hurt. We are not in a place to tell our patients like if something is painful for them or not right? So Braxton Hicks contraction can be painful. And then the third myth is you will go into labor right away after losing your mucus plug or getting your membrane stripped. So let's talk about these individually. The mucus plug, that is a sign of impending labor, but that doesn't mean you're going to go into labor today, right? You lose your mucus plug, it means you're going into labor soon, maybe in the next couple of days, Okay, maybe in the next week, but it doesn't mean like, oh, it's out, I need to go to the doctor's office today because I'm going to go into labor today and have the baby today. That's not how that works. And then getting your membrane stripped. I personally have had this done because I was getting kind of um, far along in my pregnancy. It did absolutely nothing. Some people are very sensitive to this. You do it and they go into labor and everything works out great. Some people, it does absolutely nothing to get your membrane stripped. So that's really individual. And also, even if you do it, you're probably not gonna go into labor right away. I think a lot of people have it in their mind, like, okay, I'm gonna go to doctor for my, my clinical appointment, they're gonna strip my membranes, and I'm gonna have a baby this afternoon. Usually it's still another couple of days or a week later that you actually go into labor after you get your membrane stripped. So that's just one of those things you need to think about. So that was my video on true versus false labor. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.